Hi, I'm still in Bulgaria and we're at one of the four drinking pool highs that I've been to on this trip. And it's a slightly different construction to what I'm used to. First of all, it's very long. That's quite important. It means the, the background is thrown out of focus and you get a, a really clean shot of the bird. But normally when you're doing a drinking pool, the place where the birds perch is right at the end of the pond. Here they've done it different. They've put a raised platform here in the middle of the water and covered it in this fine gravel. The birds are really attracted to this gravel. This is where they come. And it's just, the water's just lapping over into it. You've got to get the height absolutely right, but it works a treat. It means you've got water in front of the birds as well as behind. It's something I've never incorporated in one of my hides, or my drinking pool hides, and I really ought to. From within the hide, where you're shooting at a low angle, you have a choice. You can either have the gravel completely submerged or just a little bit showing. It's quite a large expanse of water they've got in front here. And they've got a feed of water. They've got a hose pipe coming down the hill to keep it topped up. But it's working very, very well. The hose is coming from a natural spring. So in theory, it should never stop running and keep the pool topped up. Now that's one of the biggest problems with drinking pools is where do you get the water supply? If you have to carry water in, it's very heavy and it needs doing frequently in hot weather because it evaporates. If there's one species that you can guarantee coming into a drinking pool, it's the corn bunting. If you see a puddle by the side of the road, there's a very good chance you'll see a corn bunting come down to bathe and drink. They love water. Unlike many species that tend to socialise and go about in small groups, they can be very aggressive to one another. You see the threat display in the water as they're facing each other a lot, and these little squabbles up in the air. Just above the pool and to the left and right hand side there's a couple of perches so birds can be photographed as they come down towards the water. And it's something else I always say about corn buntings too, they are natural posers. When you're in Europe you see them posing along the sides of the road, they're very easy birds to photograph from the car window. And using the Pro Capture to photograph them as they're leaving the water, this is so easy with Pro Capture. You don't have to press the button until after the bird has launched into the air and you still get the picture. Goldfinches, another species that readily comes down to water, more often to drink than bathe, but they do like water. All the pictures taken with the OM-1 camera, the 150 to 400 mil lens. I didn't use another lens on the entire trip. I did take my 300 f4 with me just in case as a backup, but didn't have to use it. I like birds with reflections and I like strong reflections too where you can't tell which way up the picture should be. That requires the water to be very still. With this greenfinch there is a little bit of gravel showing. One of the problems with doing birds in flight out of water is they can become very bedraggled and they don't look very smart. They may look very comical when they're in the water but once they launch into flight it makes it a bit disappointing sometimes. So here we have a very waterlogged greenfinch and as it leaps out of the water, well, it looks tatty. So sometimes it's better to find a smarter looking bird who's not bathing, he's just drinking. So when he launches into the air, you've got a much nicer looking picture. Shutter speed, around four thousandths of a second I'd be looking for here. Faster than I normally need for flight because it's a small bird with rapid moving wings. Same for the linnet. I don't worry about the settings on Pro Capture anymore. I couldn't tell you how many frames I've got before and after. It just doesn't really matter. Just think of it in terms of you need half a second before, half a second after. So roughly 20, 25 frames. 
black-headed bunting, another bird that drinks a lot, another bird that can be photographed out of the car window. I've done them several times in Bulgaria. This is 10 times slow video. And this is the female black headed bunting. Now I haven't checked this, but I would expect every picture was taken with the lens wide open. So f4.5, unless I've got the 1.25 extender in place, which would then be f5.6. But I very rarely close the aperture down these days. Again, look how bedraggled this bird is. But I wouldn't want to own a camera today that didn't have pro capture. It's such a wonderful feature. A male chaffinch. On one of the sessions when we arrived at the hide, the water level was a bit low. The hose pipe had stopped running. We tried to siphon more water out by sucking on the pipe, but it was a hopeless case, we just couldn't get it going. So I was imagining we were going to have to start carrying water down, but Nicky had a much better idea. He simply started putting boulders in the water at the hide end, and these of course displaced the water, rising the level above the gravel. Brilliant idea, I would never have thought of that. There was a bird singing in the bushes a lot, which I didn't know the name of until I used the Merlin app on my mobile phone to identify it, and it was the Olivaceous Warbler. Strictly speaking, the Eastern Olivaceous Warbler. And although it did come in to drink, it always seemed a bit wary of the water. It never fully went into it, it would just dip a wing or its tail or a foot and sprinkle a bit of water onto itself. But a new species for me, another one I'd never photographed. Lesser grey shrike, I photographed them several times before. And the red bat shrike too. Occasionally we see these in the UK. For the ISO, I was shooting at my normal standard of 1600, occasionally going up to 3200, but I didn't have to go higher. The light was good on the whole. The red bat shrike looks much better before it goes in the water. Some red rump swallows flew around the pool, but they didn't land, and I was just amazed that the OM1 managed to focus on it, it was so fast. If you want to photograph Ortolin bunting, Bulgaria is the country to go to very common, widespread, and if you've got a drinking pool, well again, they're great drinkers. These drinking pool hides and other hides are all available through Emil Enchev, who runs bird photography tours in Bulgaria. I'll put a link to his website in the description under the video. and Ortolan bunting leaping into the air. You're not shooting through one-way glass in these hides, you're either shooting through scrim netting or a sort of nursing sleeve type arrangement like this one, but there is some one-way perspex to the side so you can see what's going on around you. Every day is divided into two sessions, a morning and an evening session. You don't want to be photographing in the middle of the day when the light is poor and also the wildlife is less active. This marsh frog is taken in slow motion video. Not intentionally, it was a mistake. I wouldn't normally do a static subject in slow motion, but I actually like the effect it has on the water. At the end of an afternoon session in what they call the red carpet hide, we opened the door to let the light in and suddenly realised on the floor we have a sand boa. 
it very quickly disappeared down a hole. It is a constrictor like the other boas, it's not a poisonous snake, and rather rare. Miro, who is one of the guys that was with us, had only ever seen 10 in his life, and his full-time job is surveying reptiles and amphibians. Unfortunately, it disappeared down a hole, immediately got underneath the carpet, and we never saw it again. In next week's film, we'll look at the last part of my trip to Bulgaria, including a session in a floating hide. Thanks for watching.